Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about two LPVOs and they're from companies that you might not be too familiar with. So up front is the Delta Striker 1-6 to and then back here is the Track Optics 1-8. Uh, to So a little bit about the company since I think you guys might not be familiar with them too much. Uh, Track did reach out to us back in January asking if we want to take a look at the scope. We chat online for like two hours every day, so I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious. Um, we said sure, we just can't get to it till probably the spring. And now it is August and they have not reached out to us in any way, ask us how it's going or what's going on with, it, with their scope. So now as far as the company themselves, they're one of these companies that's direct to customer. So think like Primary Arms or um, Athlon. Um, there are a few others that have popped up recently and I think one thing that separates tracks from those guys is the track I think is actually normal marketing practices that aren't um, questionable at least to me um, you know they didn't send us a, f a link to include in the description where you get a free uh, scope mount uh, there's no link where we get a kickback for you buying it and we weren't told to talk about inf uh, infinitely small aiming points or how this optic is better than ones that cost four or five times as much. Um, they told us nothing, um, so we're free to say whatever we want. Um, they are a newer company, though. I think they're based on the East Coast, if I if I remember correctly. So you get you do get some uh, support, and I think they have a pretty good warranty. Uh, they're pretty active on social media and I think they're easy to reach. So that's a positive, I think, because when you compare it to the Delta, you're taking a little bit more of a shot in the dark. Um, this is a Polish company and I think they're more popular in Europe and they're more popular, I think, in Australia as well. But like stateside, I don't think they even have like a United States website. Um, and even if they did, I'm not sure it'd be any good because their Polish one is really bad. Um, both of us here on channel are Polish, and this is a Polish company, so there might be a little bit of a bias there, but uh, I was able to go to their, their Polish website, and it's kind of light on info, to be honest. Um, stateside, you can buy these on Amazon, and I think there's a couple of vendors that sell them. Uh, if you go to the one that has an Amazon store with this scope, and you reach out to those guys directly, you should be able to get this scope a little bit cheaper than the Tract, uh, and then that... And that cheaper than what is listed on Amazon, is what I'm trying to say. So on Amazon, I think they go for around 850. You can probably pick it up below eight. And on, in comparison, the track is, they used to be 1200 uh, when we got this thing. I looked today and it's a thousand dollars, like 990 something. I know that earlier in the year, I think Memorial Day, they had a, uh, a sale. So if you hold out for uh, one of the holidays, you might be able to pick this thing up a little bit cheaper. So at the end of the day, these scopes are pretty much um, separated, but maybe a couple hundred bucks at most. So pretty, pretty similar market space. Um, if you're wondering, like if you have no idea what these are, you haven't been able to look through them. Uh, one thing that I can recommend is go back and watch two of our videos. The first one is where we compared the Delta to the um, PST. Uh, the Gen 2 Viper PST, uh, the Delta 1, and then you can go back two years prior, and then that Viper actually was compared to the Razer Gen 2 and the Viper 1. So this kind of gives you a frame of reference if you've seen either of those optics, um, how this thing uh, compares. They're both made in Japan, um, maybe at the same factory, I'm not really sure, uh, but there are some differences uh, in the scope, so we'll talk about it right now. The biggest selling point uh, to us on both of them is their weight. So the track being 1 to 8 on our scale is 19.4 uh, ounces. Now if you compare it to like the Brownells, uh, 1 to 8 has a very similar feature set from what I can tell. Um, that thing is 24.8 ounces so that's uh, 5 ounces more than, than this. That's significant. Uh, this thing is even lighter the Delta is 17.3 ounces, and if you compare it to like the Viper, it's 22.7. So both of these scopes are five ounces-ish cheaper than some competitors, which I think is pretty significant. 
and now just to kind of drive, just to give you guys more info, they're both on arrow mounts. Uh, this one has a Trijicon uh, red dot mount with the hollow sun in the front, and that whole combo comes in at 23.8 ounces. Tracked same uh, mount, 22.7 ounces. ACOG with a uh, LaRue mount is 13.1 ounces and then a EXPS 3 10.6 and a G33 magnifier lower one third 21.4 ounces. So what I'm trying to illustrate there is that these are pretty light and compared to like an ACOG or a red light magnifier you are getting a lot of performance um, for the weight. I think you might be closer to 26, 27 ounces with some other uh, one to six, one to eight options. Just kind of going over the outside of them. Um, obviously this thing is gray. I'm not a fan of that color. I would prefer black or FDE, um, but I know some guys will love this or just get some spray paint and uh, you won't be able to tell. Neither of them have a locking diopter piece in the back. Um, it's smooth, it's tight, it's not going to get bumped easily, I think. Um, they're both kind of hard plastic here. Uh, moving forward to the magnification ring, they're both very smooth. Nothing, it's not overly tight or anything. With the delta probably being a little bit uh, tighter to adjust, but it does come with a throw lever included, one that threads in which is great, um, it's included, love that. Um, the track does not have that. It does have like a small race portion. Um, if you're gonna buy this, they do have uh, throw levers on their website that will fit this. I would highly suggest you buy that at the same time. Just to know that on the track, the magnification level is on the ring itself, which is something that I'm a little more used to. Um, alternatively here, it's actually on the scope body. One thing also, you know, if you're going to be carrying this on your rifle and it's slung, um, this is going to be rubbing against your plate carrier or your, or your chest rig or whatever. Um, so you can't, you can't adjust where this goes. So it could get bumped, but just, I don't, it's pretty much the same uh, width as the as the cab on the side here, so just something to note that you can't adjust that. Moving forward to the rest of the skull body, it's a little bit longer on the one to eight, not noticeably so, um, but it is a little bit longer. The certain, uh, the center portion here is like noticeably uh, bigger than the, stri uh, the striker. The, the scope caps, they're both capped, and the track does have an O-ring on the bottom, whereas the Delta does not. I'm not sure how much that will matter. We didn't, you know, throw them in the pond or anything. That's something to note, though. And these are 0.2 mils on the track, whereas these are 0.1 mils. I'd say I would prefer 0.1. Uh, I think on an AR, 0.2 is fine. These turrets are a little bit nicer, I think, on the track than, than these. The ones on the Delta, they do seem kind of tall. I think just in relation to how big the center of the body is here. Um, but when you're looking at it here, you can see that it's not actually obstructing, uh, obstructing the view through the hollow sun at all. So even though they, look, they do look kind of tall, they're not getting in the way. I don't think it's an issue. Going to the illumination, uh, they both go 
uh, they both have uh, off in betweens. The, this has 1 to 11 and the delta, this one has 1 to 10. The adjustment is definitely nicer. Um, it's audible, tactile. Um, it takes a good amount of force to twist that on delta. It's very, it's very, very nice. This one you can kind of get stuck. You can like, if I wanted to, I could leave it on uh, the position between uh, off and uh, and like ten. Whereas I can't, I cannot do that with the delta. But it works. They both have off in between. Now getting into the scopes themselves, into the body rather, in the glass. Like I said, I was able to find a picture, a very blurry, poor quality spec sheet on one of the websites for the Delta. And from what I was able to uh, see, the field of view quoted on the Delta is 116 feet at 1x. This is 105. But as you can see by the pictures I'm showing you, I was not able to see much of a difference uh, actually, just looking at 100 yards at a target, um, they both seem very, very close, if not identical. So there isn't that much of a difference in field of view. And then um, there's here's a couple pictures at 6 and 8x. That's obviously going to be different. Now, uh, iBox, on, this, on the same note, um, very usable on both. I did not have any issues when actually shooting with it. The one thing that I did notice on the track... Uh, so we mount these on the rail and have a cam the camera mounted on the rail behind it. And when I was going from 1 to 8, um, I had to actually had to move the camera up one pick slot to get uh, the same sight picture uh, through the scope. So the eye, the eye does change on this, but when I'm actually behind it, it's so minimal that you don't notice. You just kind of adjust naturally. It's, it's, not, um, it's not noticeably worse as you kind of work through the magnification range. Both of the scopes are mil, and they're both offered mil MOA. As far as I know, there is no BDC option. Um, I'm not a fan of BDC, so that works for me. The reticles, I, I'd be happy with either of them. Either of them, they're not, um, they're very usable. There is a couple of things that I don't like. Um, neither of them have any wind, wind holds beyond when you're holding down they obviously have the mill dots or the mill hashes on the side, but as you go down, there's nothing. So like a small mini Christmas tree, um, I think for me would be pretty welcome. The Delta here has a more fine reticle. It has uh, one and half mil uh, lines on the reticle, but what it does not have is it does not have any numbers. So when I first look through it, you're kind of uh, lost where you you know you're not sure if those first lines are actually one little half mil or what's going on um, and then as you kind of get work your right down like four five six mils it's a little easier to get lost in the delta just because there's again there's no number so you pretty much got to count all the way down whereas the tract it's a little bit of a simpler radical because it only has the full mil values for you and it does have it does tell you uh, when you're five mils down and you only have a few more lines above it. So it's a little easier to actually know when you just pick it up, if you're stressed, tired, whatever. Um, it's a little easier to use in that sense. Um, but they're both missing the wind holes, which I think would be pretty nice. Um, and I think the, the numbering thing is done, I think, pretty good by track. If you had more, if you had like one, two, three, four, five, then you're just obstructing your sight picture because um, you're probably going to be holding in where that number is. Um, like Vortex has, has an old, old reticle that has that going down. It's just, it's terrible. So I'm glad that, I'm glad Trag didn't do that. But Delta could use at least uh, a couple numbers to let you know where you're at. Um, glass quality, it's, I do have to give the slight edge to the Trag, especially at 1X. It does feel a little bit better. It's a little more of a true 1X um, when using the Delta it almost, it's almost like a fisheye effect 
so bumping it to like 1.1 helps. It doesn't come off as, as much as on camera, but when I was playing with it, there's definitely some more distortion on the edges with the Delta, and it just it does feel wider, like a fisheye. So this is a little more of a flat image, I would say. Um, but in terms of like glass quality, that's really the only, th only thing that I noticed. Um, I'm showing you guys some pictures, some video. Maybe you guys can see something that I can't. Uh, but not much, not much difference at all. Um, going back to illumination, though, there is uh, quite a big, big uh, bit of difference there. I would definitely say the Delta is daylight bright, um, but then it does not get that dim on the on the other end, um, where if you're shooting in like really low light and you want something dim that's barely visible. Uh, this is pretty bright still at once on, on one and I'd say the dot is not as crisp uh, on the Delta so on the track the illumination does not get as bright not nearly as bright and but it does get dimmer so if you're trying to like you know one two three at a very low light situation I think the track has the edge there um, and dots a little bit cleaner um, one kind of thing is that when you have it on like super bright, maybe you guys can kind of tell there, eh, maybe not. I'll try to get a picture of it. Um, but you do get the way the emitter is set up, you kind of get some like blowback in your eye. The way like your face lights up red, whereas it's not the same uh, with the Delta. Um, I don't use illumination that much. Uh, I can see pluses and minuses to both. I wish the track went brighter. And I wish the Delta went a little bit dimmer and had a crisper dot. So you just, you can put a red dot on top and forget about it. Overall, I think they're really good optics, both of them. Um, for me, one of the biggest selling points is the weight. Um, the price, I think it's not a cheap scope, but that's not super expensive. Radicals are great. Um, and I think it really depends if you're, two things, I think, how, how much magnification you want and how important is uh, daylight bright uh, reticle for you. So, personally, I want all the magnification I can get. Um, so I will be leaning towards the 1 to 8, but no, I then eventually probably go to 2, 2 to 10, 3 to 15. And just to summarize, there very very close I think the differences come down to how comfortable are you with a company that doesn't have a big American presence versus someone that is, is fairly local to us and probably easy to reach um, how important is daylight bright illumination to you um, how important is a crisp illumination and do you need a dim and then how much magnification do you want it's going to be it's going to be a toss-up, and I think it's a very difficult difficult choice. Uh, but hopefully the information that we provided you guys here uh, will make the decision a little bit easier.